Hey guys, how's it going? Now, in the previous video, we covered some of the working of the scintillation counter, although it wasn't complete. And so in this video, we will be covering the rest of the components that make up the scintillation counter. So in the previous video, we had covered the working up till the photomultiplier tube. And in this video, we will cover more electronic components associated with the scintillation counter. Now towards the end of the previous video I showed you this table where I showed you that the final charge being produced at the anode of the photomultiplier tube was pretty small and it just wasn't enough to be analyzed for our purposes. So what we have in our scintillation counter is we have two more components called the preamplifier and the amplifier. Now the preamplifier amplifies the signal from the photomultiplier tube and uh, it amplifies it and it also widens the signal as you can see from here. So this is the signal from your photomultiplier tube and the preamplifier is amplifying it as well as widening the signal. Then we have our amplifier which is supposed to provide shaping to the signals. So now you can see that all the signals have a characteristic shape as well as they have, they have been narrowed down. So they are thinner now. Then finally, we have this pulse height analyzer, which is what we use to get the output from the scintillation counter, the output that we, um, you know, uh, the spectrum of the gamma rays is uh, obtained from the pulse height analyzer. Now, pulse height analyzer are of two types. Um, one is a single channel analyzer and the other is a multi-channel analyzer. So. Um, in a single channel analyzer, what we have is we have a lower level discriminator and an upper level discriminator. And once you set uh, these two at some values, then what the pulse height analyzer does is it returns either uh, yes or no kind of signals that is true or false. So whenever uh, the amplitude of the output of the amplifier pulse lies within the LD and the ULD, then your pulse height analyzer would return a true signal which would be a single pulse and these pulses returned from the pulse height analyzer are always of the same height and same time period or same width you can say so as you can see from this graph um, this in this case the condition was true that the signal the amplitude of the signal of the amplifier lies within LLD and ULD and this time it isn't true, this time it isn't true, and this time again it is true, so it returns a true signal. So the next component that we have is we have a scalar, which is basically the counter. So you can set the scalar to uh, have a preset time of like a minute or 50 seconds. So what it does is it counts the number of uh, truths in the, these pulses from the PHA. Uh, within that time period. So that's uh, the remaining of the electronics associated to this scintillation counter. So and yeah, I forgot to tell you the MCA, which is a multi-channel analyzer, works in a kind of a different manner. Now, as you might have noticed, um, when we are um, using an SCA, that is a single channel analyzer, and once we have set the LLD and ULD to some particular value, what you can see is the uh, some of the information like when the pulses lie within some other voltage range they do not show up in the PHA output so a lot of potentially useful information is being lost however in an MCA um, what we do is uh, the signal is fed to the computer and it um, re registers almost all the pulses so uh, in that case none of the information is lost and an MCA could be considered to be consisting of a series of single channel analyzers which are you know observing the output from the amplifier within small ranges like 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 and they are all observing the output and uh, uh, registering the event. So this is the kind of an output that you would get uh, from your PHA and or maybe uh, your MCA like it would be uh, registering the events within some particular range simultaneously so none of the information is lost so that is the biggest difference between an MCA and an SCA that an SCA 
uh, once you are looking within let's say you are looking within a voltage range of 0.6 to 0.7 so a lot of uh, events like when uh, pulses are being produced within uh, when the pulses produced by the amplifier do not lie within that range uh, your pulse height analyzer do doesn't register them so a lot of information is being lost well that's it for this video in the next video we will consider the interaction mechanisms that a gamma ray can have uh, with the matter so that's it for now thanks for watching and have a great day